M1A2 Abrams Usage in battles The M1A2 Abrams excels as an all-around jack-of-all-trades vehicle capable of any role presented to it. It has a great combination of protection, firepower, situational awareness and mobility to allow it to adapt to any task it may face, from close quarters fighting in urban areas to long-range engagements on large open maps. Urban Combat The M1A2 with its good mobility and improved protection over the M1A1 can function as an effective brawler in close quarters urban fighting. The M1A2's reload rate is on par when ace to its counterparts, with the exception of the Challenger 2 and Type 90, making it able to quickly dish out damage and deal with multiple foes. Thusly, the M1A2 has no issue leading the charge into urban areas and being a frontline vehicle in the thick of the action, being able to equally deal damage and take it. Rural Combat on large open maps, the M1A2 is fully able to exploit its improved turret protection and commander's thermal imaging to give it the upper hand in long-range battles. The mobility of the M1A2 allows it to reach advantageous positions that overlook key areas of the map but its first general thermal device doesn't allow a fast identification of targets at range and in dense woodland. The commander's thermal imager means the player can keep track of threats all around the vehicle and monitor the battlefield without exposing the turret at all. The M1A2 is best played as an ambush sniper, using its commander's thermal sight to survey from cover, exposing the tank only to engage a target. The turret armor also means the M1A2 should be kept in a hold-down position, making the tank extremely hard to destroy. The M1A2 also retains the ability to effectively take the enemy head-on when the situation calls for it, such as assaulting capture points. The M838A1 shell is also valuable, allowing the M1A2 to become an ad hoc anti-aircraft vehicle, especially against unwary helicopters that get too close to you or your allies. Notable Enemies Leopard 2A5-2A6, these are the main counterparts of the M1A2. Though the M1A2 outperforms the Leopard 2A5 in firepower, the Leopard 2A6 has superior firepower compared to both, having the best aps in the game. The DM-53 AFSTS the Leopard 2A6 is equipped with is capable of penetrating the turret cheek of the M1A2 at closer ranges. Thus, the Leopard 2 should be a high priority target to be dealt with carefully. When hull down, the Leopard 2s can only be effectively penetrated through the gun mantlet or a lucky shot into the turret ring, so aim for the gun area, as this usually results in at least the disablement of the cannon or breach. If the Leopard 2 presents its hull, Aim for the left side as the lined up crew members usually result in all of them being knocked out at the same time, resulting in a one shot if done correctly. TADU The TADU can be a fearsome enemy if you are unaware of its significant disadvantages and weaknesses. The tank's frontal protection is very strong, though the area around the gun and the driver's hatch are weak spots that should be targeted. The TADU, like many other T series vehicles, are prone to being destroyed in one shot due to the tightly packed interior that has the turret crew sitting on top of all the ammunition. Furthermore, the T eighty U is very vulnerable to any form of angling in the hull as its side protection is very weak in comparison to the frontal armor. A single penetration at all but the most oblique angles usually results in the detonation of the hull ammo carousel to easily destroy the T eighty U. Leclerc, the Leclerc's good mobility, firepower, and protection make it a formidable foe to engage. However the tank's armor scheme is inconsistent and presents three main weak spots frontally, the massive and extremely weak mantlet, the UFP and LFP. These are quite easy to hit and present a good chance of dealing serious damage or knocking out the vehicle entirely. Pros and Cons Pros New depleted uranium composite armor layout makes the frontal turret extremely difficult to penetrate to all munitions in the game, other than a riot CL1343 and the Leopard 2A6's DM-53, at short range can effectively destroy aircraft or helicopters with new HEADFS shell through proximity detonation. Thermal sight for both the commander and gunner. Good crew survivability like the rest of the Abrams line. M829 APF SDS unlocked at Deer Eye modification, as of update 2.01 cons. Very easy to penetrate, even by low rank 5 tanks, hits on the UFP can auto bounce into the turret, often incapacitating the gunner and commander, as well as detonating the ammo. The turret ring is a massive weak spot, any tank in the game can penetrate it, a hit to the highly angled upper front plate will likely cause the incoming shell to ricochet into the turret ring, destroying critical components and knocking out crew members. The LFP is huge and has very poor protection. Has the same weak spots as the preceding Abrams. The gun mantlet weak spot on the turret, though this is common with all MBTs. 
the Arai CL3143 APF SDS and Leopard 2A6's DM53 has a good chance of penetrating the turret cheeks if they're hit at a right angle. Least maneuverable Abrams in the game, due to its weight of 61.7 tons. The stock heat shell is very difficult to use at top tier due to every tank you face having more than 600 mm of chemical protection or being coated in ERA frontally. Flank shots are the only reliable way to get kills. Like with most Abrams series tanks, the engine deck is slightly raised, meaning that you will not be able to depress the gun over the rear of the tank. The M1A2 is armed with the same 120mm M256 smoothbore gun as the M1A1 and has access to the same ammunition of Aphsts and Heat FS. However, the M1A2 also gets access to a new Heat MPT shell, M830A1. The M829 Aphs round is still an excellent anti-tank munition, boasting the third highest penetration figures out of any Sabo round in the game at 493 mm of flat penetration at point blank and decreasing to just 458 mm at 2 km. Its angled performance is also excellent, penetrating 284 mm of armor at 60 degrees point blank and 264 mm at 2 km. It is sufficient to reliably engage any vehicle in the game frontally. The MA-30 Heat FS shell penetrates a meager 480 mm of armor. It is not recommended to use this shell after unlocking the MA-29. The M1A2's new shell, M830A1 is a special type of heat FS round. Instead of using a conventional impact fuse, M830A1 is a sub-caliber heat FS round that has been sabotaged into a 120mm casing and fitted with a proximity fuse. This allows it to effectively engage low-flying aircraft and helicopters up to a range of 4.5 km. The sub-caliber nature of the round means it travels extremely quickly at 1,400 meters per second making it the fastest heat round in the game. However, its effectiveness against armored vehicles is limited as it penetrates a mere 350 mm of armor. The M1A2's gun handles very well, with a very efficient stabilizer that allows accurate fire at any speed and a very fast 40 degrees per second turret traverse. The gun has good depression and elevation angles, negative 10 and positive 20 degrees respectively. An aced crew can reload a gun in just 6 seconds, which is comparable to the Leopard 2A5. Leclerc and TADU, although slower than the Type 90 and Challenger 2. The M1A2 Abrams retains the same 1519 horsepower AGT 1500 gas turbine on previous Abrams variants, though the tank has gained an additional 4 tons of weight, putting the total mass of the tank at 61.7 tons. This translates to a noticeable decrease in acceleration and maneuverability due to a lower HP slash ton ratio. However, the tank retains the same 68 km per hour top speed and 40 km per hour reverse speed and relative to its counterparts the M1A2 Abrams is still fairly mobile, especially at speeds over 40 km per hour. When stock, the hull traverse is quite horrendous and acceleration is lacking, though these are largely remedied by researching the tracks, filters, engine and transmission modifications. The M1A2's armor is a massive improvement in comparison to its predecessor, the M1A1 and is the first Abrams in the game to be equipped with depleted uranium composite armor, located behind the turret cheeks of the tank. The protection afforded with the use of depleted uranium amounts to roughly over 300mm Raymor armor against kinetic energy projectiles whilst retaining the near impenetrable chemical protection of the M1A1. The turret's overall kinetic energy protection ranges from around 780mm to 680mm, whilst the chemical energy protection ranges from 1200mm to 1000mm. However, the M1A2 has no depleted uranium located in the lower front plate, retaining the same weak spots as the M1A1's hull. The turret ring and breech also are weak spots, though the breech on the Abrams series is notably some of the strongest out of all NATO main battle tanks being small and well protected against chemical energy rounds and some early APS rounds. The tank, combat, full tracked, 120mm gun M1A2, shortened to M1A2 Abrams, is a rank 7 American medium tank with a battle rating of 10.7, ab slash arabe slash sp. It was introduced in update 1.93 Shark Attack as the top researchable vehicle in the US ground forces tech tree. The M1A2 introduces heavy depleted uranium armor and a commander's thermal sight. History In the second half of the 1980s, a development project was launched to increase the combat effectiveness of the Abrams MBT. The result of this undertaking became the M1A2 version of the Abrams. The new version featured an upgraded fire control system, a new independent commander's panoramic sight as well as improved protection thanks to the use of second-generation depleted uranium composite armor. 
All of these upgrades combined significantly bolstered the combat capabilities of the Abrams tank. Production of the M1A2 began in 1986 and the modification was formally introduced into U.S. service in 1992. The M1A2 and its subvariants are the most advanced modifications of the Abrams tank fielded to date. Over 1,500 M1A2S have been built with some older variants also being upgraded to the M1A2 standard. Apart from the U.S. as its primary operator, the M1A2 also sees service with the armed forces of Kuwait and Saudi Arabia.